Yeah. So you feel you're ready for the fight? Yeah. Yeah, All right. I'm prepared. I honestly can't wait. Yeah. I can't wait to put these paws on somebody, man. Too long, so. <laughs> That's what's up. Too long, yeah. yeah. I can't wait for all this like pre-fight bullshit to be over, and then to close the door. It's gonna be such a relief. Sometimes no jitters. Just uh, the week before, type. Yeah. This is honestly, this has been the worst part. Like scheduling people to pick up tickets, trying to sell the tickets, getting the physicals and stuff done. Like this is the part that's stressful to me. Once Yo, I get in the cage, it's gonna most, be like. Yeah. For most, that's the hardest part. Yeah. It's the week before. All this nonsense. Yeah. It's crazy, you know. Once this is all done, and I'm on weight too. That's another big thing. Once I get down, it'll be much better. You still gotta cut weight. Still got like nine pounds. Shit. Yeah, bro. Wow. Yeah. In four days. In four days, yeah. Mixed martial arts is a dangerous sport, but the physical aspect. isn't the only hazardous part. Rondell Detuan Clark, a healthy 26-year-old, died on August 15th, three days after collapsing during an amateur MMA bout. He died because of the widespread practice of weight cutting. Weight cutting has been around uh for a very long time. Uh, I know that it, it made its real uh, splash in the wrestling community. Um, very primitive back in the day, weight cutting, you know, with a plastic sauna suit, utilization of the sauna itself, uh, and just basically trying to deplete your body as much as possible to suck as much water and weight off you as you can. The idea behind that is to try to make that weight and be as big as you can after the rehydration. Rondell's sudden and unexpected death blindsided his friends, family, and the MMA community. Rondell was a physically gifted athlete in the best shape of his life. He trained with world-class coaches and trainers. A talented and explosive athlete, Rondell had legitimate aspirations of making it to the UFC. He had uh, what I would call the core values of martial arts, honor, integrity, loyalty, discipline, confidence, mental well-being, uh, awareness, you know, but uh, I think his, his, uh, his combination of his, his work ethic and his athleticism and his passion were the three biggest traits that I would say were his specialties. In his debut, Rondell did not fail to live up to the hype. He ended the fight 25 seconds into the first round by a technical knockout. Fighters to the center of the ring. The doors yeah. are locked. We are underway. I mean, sometimes with a touch of gloves, sometimes guys want to be bros right off the bat. And it's, you know, if you're in there to get into a fight, I mean, I, I get it. Wow, Jordan trying to take him to the ground. Wow. Rondell countered and took the advantage right away. Yeah, Rondell needs to keep his hips back. Well, he's doing a really good job with his hips, his base. Well, these guys are monsters. Oh. Man. Those are big shots. Yeah, wow. Jordan's got a lot. Quick fight for Rondell. Wow. Powerful, powerful. Yeah, I mean, I'm excited to see this guy's next fight. Rondell Clark. Remember the name, everybody. Rondell Clark. Six weeks later, Rondell was ready for his second fight. In order to fight at the 170 pound weight class, he had to lose close to 10 pounds the night before the weigh-in. This is a photo of Rondell cutting weight the night before the weigh-in. No one at the time could have predicted the tragic outcome that would follow. Go. There you go, that works.
close to it, exactly. Yep, keep your head nice and tight. Yep. We're, we're in our camp for the second fight. And, and Randall looks better than he did in the first game. He's still strong. He still has his weight down, you know, and everything looks perfectly normal or above normal. He looked, he looked amazing in camp. He was, he was progressing still. He's young in the sport, you know what I mean? He had a long time to go. He was still progressing. And, and uh, the first camp, he could not sell tickets when he was in the sauna. We had to handle that for him. The, the second camp, I was literally in the, in the sauna with him with a dictionary. And I'm reading a word, and he's like, all right, I'll tell you the definition. People don't think like this when we're cutting weight. Like we're we're emotional. Like people, I've seen people cry in the sauna. I've seen people um, mentally give up before the fight, you know. And he's in there uh, trying to come up with definitions of words in the dictionary in the sauna. That's how amazing it went. On Saturday, August 12th, Rondell re-entered the cage. Friends and family cheering in the stands. He came out with a huge burst of energy, and. I thought there was a chance he might end it right then and there, but his opponent took it on the chin to his credit and really withstood a bunch of furious blows in the, in the beginning of the first round. Randall's beating the, the piss out of this kid, and the kid's just taking a beating, you know? He's, he's trying to weather the storm. And then all of a sudden, in, at the end of the second round, we see both of them slow down considerably. And I'm like, oh shit, I know this feeling, you know what I mean? Any fighter knows this feeling where you've gassed out and you, you throw so much that you have nothing left to give and fuck, what do you do from there? You know, either it makes you or breaks you. And Randell came out with the third round, what did he do? He took the center of the cage and he still tried to break the cage, even though he was tired, even though his body was breaking down and nobody knew it. I said to the person next to me, I was like, he's sleeping, standing up. That's literally what it looked like to me. Like, he had absolutely no power behind his punches. As far as the fight itself, it wasn't wasn't anything out of the ordinary. It wasn't uh, uh, any discrepancy between poor judgment by the referee for not stopping the fight or one of the, the combatants taking more punishment than need be. Um, there was nothing uh, evident or obvious that that would have led to what had happened you know it was just seemed like a, a well-matched uh, bout between two guys that really wanted to win and um they would just they had their fight and there was nothing out of the ordinary that would have indicated anything like this to happen all i can say was uh all i can say was it was a shocker you know uh, basically <clears throat> the end of the fight Something was wrong because, you know, it was exhaustion. You know, we figured, you know, you, you, you put 100% in, in, the, in an MMA cage, you know, you're going to be exhausted. And he, you would tell, he put his spirit up. He put everything he had in that ring. And, uh, and then when they brought the stretcher out, I was just like, wow, you know, he's uh, you know, semi coherent. Something just didn't seem right, is the way I put it. When Rondell arrived at the emergency room, doctors realized this was not a simple case of dehydration. He was immediately transferred to the intensive care unit at Beth Israel Hospital in Boston. Rondell suffered from an extreme form of muscle breakdown called exertional rhabdomyolysis. And in Rondell's case, this led to nearly every organ system in his body failing. The rhabdomyolysis, or this breakdown of muscle, leads to the release of these breakdown products into the blood. And in most cases, it can lead to kidney damage. And the damage in Rondell's case was so severe that he required dialysis. In addition, he required medication to keep his blood pressure up. His oxygen levels were critically low, and he had to be put on a mechanical ventilator. Uh, his liver started to fail, and he was able to battle on for three days. In the early morning hours of Tuesday, August 15th, Rondell went into cardiac arrest. There was nothing more the doctors could do. I couldn't 
believe it, man. I thought he was gonna pull through and... <laughs> and uh, he had had so many people visiting him the past couple days and I just sat there and called all of our friends and let them know and uh The sudden and tragic loss of Rondell rocked the many communities he was part of. As hundreds mourned, many asked the same question, why did this happen? It's hard to precisely quantify exactly how much weight cutting played into it, but I would put it to you like this. Rondell is a finely tuned athlete who is training every day and on those days, he didn't suffer exertional rhabdomyolysis. The day that he suffered this profound problem was after he underwent a significant weight cut for a fight. I think the fighters are very uh, short-sighted in seeing, hey, I'm just cutting weight, I feel fine, everything's great, it wasn't a bad cut. You know, that still takes a toll. There's still damage being done to your organs and internally that you, that you don't know what's happening. I think fighters are still very unaware of what the, uh, the effects of dehydration and weight cutting are. Several of Rondell's close friends and family have banded together to change MMA's weight cutting rules and ensure that a tragedy like this never happens again. It is not going to be an easy battle Weight cutting has been normalized in fighting culture. In many cases, the athletes may not understand the long-term damage they are inflicting upon their body. However, it is an issue that is increasingly receiving more and more attention. The purpose of the foundation is to raise awareness and education about the dangers of extreme weight cutting and to prevent other fighters from suffering the consequences of extreme weight cutting. You know, Rondell, unfortunately, is not the only fighter to have passed away from weight cutting or to have long-term health consequences from weight cutting. And it's happened at all levels, from amateur all the way up to the top professionals. And as I mentioned, there's like a lot of talk and discussion in the fighting community about this being a problem, but there hasn't been any force unifying all these voices and driving it towards action to actually change things. And that's what this foundation is going to do. We're going to unify all the people who care about MMA fighters and care about their health and safety and well-being. And we're going to get together and we're going to make change happen. And not only is it going to be good for the fighters, it's going to be good for the sport. Now you're going to get better fights because people are going to be healthier and stronger going into their fights. Over the long term, their bodies are going to be able to hold up in the long run because they're not putting this short term abuse onto their systems. So we're going to unify all of these voices, and we're gonna make change happen. That's the purpose.